Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Um, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Wang for his gracious invitation. Um, and uh, I also would like to extend my warmest greetings to all my friends and colleagues. Uh, I, I have, I left China a long time ago, uh, but uh, my, my personal feelings and warmth about my, uh, uh, by my stay in China uh, really are very, very strong. Um, I would not like to repeat what my uh, two distinguished speakers have already said about Pakistan-China relations. Um, Ambassador, uh, Senator Mushayr Hussain gave a very comprehensive picture and so did my good friend, uh, Ambassador Moinul Haq. So I, 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 you know, I'm going to discard all that and focus on what I think are critical issues uh, facing uh, our part of the world. Um, you know, in my humble opinion, geopolitics and geoeconomics uh, have a symbiotic relationship. They, it, they cannot be divorced. Um, so what we need to see also is what is the global situation at the moment? Uh, there is disorder. Uh, the the uh, international order is in a flux. And uh, sadly, uh, the, the global situation is getting more complex. Uh, I, I think uh, this is something that we need to know before we start discussing uh, geopolitical um, sort of uh, settings of our, our relationship as well as what's happening in the regions. Um, clearly, uh, there is wide consensus that uh, the 21st cent century is an Asian century and clearly China will be playing one of the most vital, pivotal roles in, uh, in the context of uh, what is happening in Eurasia and the A Asia Pacific. I don't like this phrase Indo-Pacific. I think it's nonsensical. Um, it's basically Asia Pacific is good enough. Uh, and uh, I, I think we, we, we need to, certainly in Pakistan and perhaps China should use this phrase rather than Indo-Pacific. Now, as I said, the uh, situation is getting very complex. Uh, and, but clearly, but clearly, the uh, the relationship that is going to be uh, that will define the 21st century is going to be China and the United States, uh, and uh, we certainly hope uh, that uh, conflict and confrontation is avoided. Competition, as uh, I think somebody said, maybe stiff competition uh, is, is welcome, and I think. Uh, President Xi is absolutely right that the, the future development between China and the United should, States should be on the basis of, of healthy competition, uh, on principles, and uh, peaceful coexistence. Uh, competition is welcome. And I think this is a very good move that President Xi himself has said that the United States is most welcome to join any uh, uh, aspects of, uh, of BRI. Now that's the, that's the global context that I wanted to give. The regional context is also very complicated. Uh, uh, you know, Pakistan is at the crossroad of uh, Central Asia, and South Asia, and West Asia. Uh, and uh, clearly we, we, are, we provide a very, very pivotal link uh, for CPAC and for BRI. Uh, when uh, BRI was, was conceived, uh, I certainly recall uh, that well, Pakistan was one of the first countries to, to welcome and support the BRI. And I personally think uh, the, uh, the initiative taken by uh, the President Xi uh, was a brilliant uh, geopolitical and geoeconomic uh, project. Uh, and it's, it's amazing. I, I think uh, one should give him great credit for, for visualizing how the globe is going to be. The globe is a very small, we are all interconnected. The idea is to see how we can, uh, we can 
we can work together in cooperation uh, and in good and in healthy competition and avoiding conflict and confrontation. I think this is the central theme of the whole thing. And I think the idea is basically to promote globalization, trade, economy, economic cooperation, uh, and also culture. Uh, I mean, China is a great, it's not only a country, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a self-contained civilization, uh, which has existed for thousands of years. So China can share its long-term experience uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the rest of the world. Now, I, I, sorry, I slightly shifted. I want to go back to the region that is South Asia. We, we have some serious issues here. Um, first of all, um, the United States, of course, has withdrawn. The, the withdrawal of the United, United States was very messy. Uh, and, and I think they are at the moment going through a kind of a blue period of shock and awe. Um, I think the U.S. Uh, will take some time to recover from this thing. But, but unfortunately, the attitude that the United States and West, one of the Western countries have taken towards Afghanistan is very, unfortunately, very negative. And uh, they, 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 their purpose seems to be to strangulate the new government in, uh, in, in Afghanistan. I don't think we should only refer to it as a Taliban government. It's an Afghan government. I think we, we, we ought to be very clear about the language we use when we are referring to Afghanistan. So it's, it's a pity that uh, the Western countries have taken the view uh, of non-cooperation, of, uh, of uh, strangulating the country economically. Uh, unfortunately, the situation is very grim. We need, I think we, 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 should not, we should not sweep things under the carpet. We should, we should look at the reality. The situation in Afghanistan is very complex. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's um, uh, facing very serious economic difficulties. Uh, it's facing very serious uh, problems relating to uh, settling down. And above all, uh, the, the country is faced with a, with a very serious humanitarian situation, a crisis, which is, which is going to have its own serious ripple effect uh, on countries in the region. Uh, the flow of, for instance, if, uh, if, if this, the health situation or starvation or uh, the food shortages get worse, it could get into a situation where there will be riots in Afghanistan. And at the same time, uh, the, it will create problems for the neighboring countries. So, Pakistan and China have always cooperated in bringing about a certain level of, uh, shall we say, cooperation in, in, in stabilizing Afghanistan. And I think the two countries have done, very wisely done, uh, in sending humanitarian assistance. Now, I don't want to leave Afghanistan and come to South Asia, which, which also is a very complicated situation. What we have at the moment in South Asia is um, uh, shall we say, um, uh, uneasy peace. We've got a ceasefire with, with India on the line of control, but it's very fragile, very complicated. And, you know, people must remember that India and Pakistan are both nuclear countries, uh, nuclear power countries. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, uh, the smallest thing can spark a Pareri fire. So I think we need to keep that factor in mind. We hope that, uh, that uh, common sense uh, will prevail on both sides to ensure that there is a certain level of stability and peace and cooperation in the region. At the moment, the only regional organization that we had is SARC. And SARC, unfortunately, is again being, uh, shall be strangulated or uh, by, by, by India. I mean, we have not had a sum, We've not had a summit in the last uh, four or five years, uh, and that is mainly because of India's opposition. Now, you see, uh, we have to keep this in mind that Pakistan and India have a complicated relationship. China has had some complications with the, with the, with the Indians as well uh, in regard to uh, the, the situation on this China-India China, uh, border.
So, so, so this is the geopolitical context. Now coming down to uh, 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 CPAC, uh, my good friends have already outlined, I don't want to go into the, the quality of uh, the, the question of, of projects and the details and so on and so forth, but I would like to underline two or three points. Number one, for Pakistan, this is a massive project and we warmly welcome it. Uh, and, and, and you know, people must understand that uh, that Gwadar port was not imposed by China on but We requested China for the Gwadar port. I am the one who negotiated it. So I can tell you that we are very grateful to the Chinese leadership for the very uh, generous uh, uh, help in, 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 in setting up the Gwadar project. Now, you know, for Pakistan, Pakistan is, is relatively small, we don't have that kind of expertise to handle these kind of projects. So we face some problems, there's no doubt about it. There were hiccups, uh, and uh, I think our, our friendship, which is based on trust and confidence, uh, has, uh, has uh, been trouble-free. I think minor hiccups that happen uh, should be uh, taken with a certain degree of patience and, uh, and uh, understanding. Uh, we realized that there were some security issues. Uh, uh, we are very, very sorry that a number of Chinese uh, lost their lives. Uh, we, we extend our sympathy to the families. Then, of course, there, are, there, are some, there were some administrative is issues uh, that needed to be addressed. And I think Ms. Ambassador, uh, Senator Mushayad Hussain has already referred to the reorganization that has taken place in creating um, uh, um, uh, the uh, sort of CPEC authority as well as um, uh, the reorganization of the Board of Investment. So I think the government of Pakistan, the people of Pakistan are deeply, deeply committed to seeing CPEC flower as it has been envisaged by the leaderships on, on, on both sides. And I also want to want, uh, make one more point. We cannot forget that the Pakistan-China relationship is foundational. And it's foundational because the, the greatest leaders of China and the greatest leaders in Pakistan contributed brick by brick in building this edifice of, of, a, of an excellent relationship. Now, let me be frank here. There, there, are, there are forces that are working against some of these brilliant schemes. Uh, like, for instance, uh, CPEC. Uh, I will be very straightforward in stating that, 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 that we, there is some level of opposition from India, for instance. Uh, India sees uh, CPEC uh, as, as something which is uh, uh, undermining its uh, uh, security or undermining its interests. And I think to a very large extent, they've also convinced the Americans that uh, CPEC is a, is, is a project that has, uh, that has uh, implications, security implications for Pakistan, uh, for, 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 for India and for the West. Now, it is the responsibility of Pakistan, also the responsibility of China, a great friend of Pakistan, that we, we address these misperceptions. I mean, you know, it's, it's misperceptions which are propaganda based. So I think there is a, a certain level of responsibility on the part of China and Pakistan to address these issues. Likewise, on the question of BRI, which is a brilliant project, transcontinental over the next three, uh, three decades or so, till two, 2049, uh, a network of roads, network of, uh, of roads, uh, motorways, railroads, uh, sea lanes, uh, uh, how, how, how this is going to work together is, and in a way, BRI and CPEC get connected at a very, at a very, very strategic area, which gives uh, um, uh, us access to, to West Asia, to Central Asia, to to the Arab world, to Africa, and also to Europe. So I think we, we uh, as, as friends, as partners, we need to, uh, shall we say, 
uh, address some of the concerns that uh, we we find with uh, with uh, with some of the countries that are in opposition to some of these projects. Now, finally, uh, I would say that uh, um, uh, it's a brilliant project. Uh, we fully support it. We see the advantages of, uh, of uh, how trade and commerce and economic cooperation, uh, globalization, all these things will flower. At the same time, uh, I think both Pakistan and China are deeply committed to multilateralism. We fully believe in the Charter of the United Nations. We fully believe we cooperate on huge number of international issues. Uh, we have common views. Uh, we consult each other, and we we are not we are not partners against anybody. I think this is a point I want to underline. We are friends, and we welcome cooperation and help uh, and assistance uh, on the basis of principles from uh, other countries. Uh, finally, uh, I would say that uh, it was very heartening that the, that the, uh, the meeting between, uh, you know, the virtual meeting between President Xi and President Biden uh, gives us hope uh, uh, that they do realize that the future of the globe rests very much on the cooperation uh, <clears throat> And, and, and coexistence between China and the, and, and the United States. It has global implications. So I think this is the first meeting. It has uh, <clears throat> created some hope and we hope subsequent meetings are also in this, held in the same spirit. Uh, last uh, two sentences, um, uh, we uh, we owe it to the great leaders of China and great leaders of Pakistan that we maintain this long-standing friendship on the basis of trust, uh, mutual benefit, uh, mutual respect. And I see a very bright future for Pakistan-China relationship. Uh, so I would like to uh, conclude by thanking uh, the government and the people of China for all that you have done for us over the last 70 years. And you've done so much that uh, I think words are not enough to express our gratitude. Thank you very much.